Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton, also known as Liza or Betsy, born on August 9, 1757, Albany, New York. She was the middle child of two other sisters, Angelica Schuyler Church and Margarita Peggy Schuyler Van Rensselaer. Angelica being the oldest and Peggy the youngest. Her parents being Continental Army General Philip Schuyler and Catherine Van Rensselaer. While she did have up to five other siblings, not much is known about them. Both of Eliza's parents come from wealthy Dutch families, making her family very, very rich and powerful. Though there was quite a few, well, there was many churches in Albany, but her family belonged to the specific church called the Reformed Dutch Church of Albany, which is still around to this day, though the original building that Eliza was baptized in was demolished in 1806. As a young girl, when she wasn't learning to sew or read with her mother, she was accompanying her father to Six Nation meetings. Not long after, Eliza met Benjamin Franklin, who stayed at the Schuyler Mansion for a bit. Many knew her as somewhat of a tomboy at a young age, but as she grew up, she remained strong-willed and open-minded. Like many earthly families in the 1700s, her family owned many slaves, causing Eliza to grow up around slavery. In the 1780s, Eliza went to stay with her aunt, Gertrude Schuyler Kochari in Marston Town, New Jersey. And I apologize if I am pronouncing those wrong. I am not good with names at all. Please correct me if I am wrong. There, she met her future and very reckless husband, Alexander Hamilton, one of General George's aide de camps and later Washington's right hand man. They had actually met briefly two years earlier when Alexander had dinner with the Schuylers on his way back from a negotiation with Washington's behalf. She also developed a close friendship with Martha Washington while in Morristown. The relationship between Alexander and Elizabeth grew, and with it, her feelings for him. Not even a year after they met, they were engaged with Eliza's father's blessing. A young man named Audre, Audre, that's a French name, I believe I am saying it correctly, had sketched for her, and she might have had a crush on him when she was 17. After Eliza and Alex were separated for two months, they got married December 14, 1780, at a Schuyler mansion. After having a short honeymoon at Faster's, Eliza's child at home, Alexander returned to the military in January of 1781. Not long after, Eliza joined him at New Windsor, where Washington's army was stationed. In her time there, she rekindled her friendship with Martha Washington. Throughout that time, Eliza got relocated twice, one with Alexander and the other to her parents' house in Albany, where she would soon find out she was pregnant with their oldest child, Philip Hamilton, named after her father. Philip would die in a duel with Georgie Gray at age 19. Long after Eliza found out she was pregnant and before Philip was born, Alexander Hamilton and George Washington had a terrible falling out. There was ordered in Washington sending Alexander home to Eliza, soon relocating to Albany with her father, then to a new home across the river from the New Windsor headquarters. There, Eliza focused on creating a loving home for them and also aiding Alexander with his political writings, which were parts of his 31-page letter to Robert Morris. It layered out financial knowledge that will aid him later in his career. Most of them are written in her handwriting. But once again, Eliza had to relocate again to her parents' house. While apart, Alexander sent her multiple letters telling her not to worry for his safety, also sending her confidential, mi confidential military secrets, including the lead-up to the Battle of Yorktown. But the battle was very close to home after British soldiers attempted to raid postures where Eliza and her family were staying. But thanks to her younger sister Peggy's quick thinking, they were spared. After winning the Battle of Yorktown, Alexander was able to return to Eliza in Albany, where he would remain for almost two years before moving to New York City in 1783. Earlier that year, Angelica and her husband, John Baker Church, moved to Europe for business reasons, where Angelica would spend the next 14 years visiting Eliza and Alex in 1785 and 1789. On September 25, 1784, Eliza gave birth to her second child, Angelica Hamilton, named after her older sister. Later in 1787, Eliza sat for a portrait by Ralph Earl while he was being held in Debater's prison. Alexander had heard of Earl's predicament and asked for her to sit for him, hoping to make money to eventually buy his way out of prison, which he miraculously did. By this time, Eliza had three children, Philip, Angelica, Alexander Jr., who had been born in May 1786, and was most likely pregnant with their fourth child, James Alexander, who had been born in the following April. In addition to these children, the Hamiltons took Francis Affil, two years old and the youngest child of Alexander's friend, Colonel Edward Affil, 
After Alex became Treasury Secretary in 1789, her social duties increased. Her, Miss Sarah J, and Miss Lucy Knox were the head of the official society. In addition, managing your households. Years later, Eliza continued to raise her and Alexander's children. A fifth, John Church Hamilton, had been born in August 1792. She continued to maintain their large household throughout multiple moves between New York, Philadelphia, and Albany. While in Philadelphia, around November 24, 1794, Eliza suffered a miscarriage. And, but later on in the year, as well as 1794, Rumors spread about her husband having an affair with Mariah Reynolds. Eliza altogether did not believe the rumors, though. But on July 13, 1797, Eliza's brother-in-law wrote to Alexander. He wrote, It makes not the least impression on her, only that she considers the whole knot of those opposed to you to be scoundrels. But on August 25, 1797, Alexander Hamilton published the Reynolds pamphlet where he said the rumors to be true. Eliza at the time was pregnant with their sixth child. Her response was leaving Alexander in New York, same with her parents in Albany, where William Stephan was born on August 4th, 1794. She only came back to New York for her eldest son, Philip, because the local doctor could not cure him of typhus. Over time, Alex and Eliza forgot and had two more children together, remaining married. First, Elizabeth was born on November 20th, 1799. But before their last child was born, they tragically lost Philip, who died from an infected gunshot wound he received in a duel with George Eaker. He died he died at um in her older sister Angelica's house. It took fourteen about fourteen hours for him to die. The, then their last child, born next June eighteen oh two, was named Philip in his honor. Only two years later, Alexander Hamilton died in a duel as well with one Aaron Burr. On July 12, 1804, death consumed the man. Eliza was left with Alexander's steps. She soon became vice president of the Relator of Poor Widows with Small Children. As Eliza's life went on, she defended her husband, reorganized his papers with her son, John's help, and helped Dolly Madison raise enough money to build the Washington Monument. By 1846, Eliza was suffering from short-term memory loss, but still remembered Alexander, often referring him as her Alexander, or her Hamilton. Outliving all but one of her siblings, Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton died on November 9, 1854, was buried in Trinity Church near Alexander and Philip, where people can now tell her story. She spent her whole life telling all but one story, her own, and now it's our turn to tell her story. It's her turn to have her story told.